Hello, Chef Michael from Part-Time Permies. We're going to do a pretty quick demo here. We are taking the remainder of our garden hot peppers, uh, turning them into fermented or lacto-fermented hot sauces. So we cleaned out our garden uh, the night before the first hard frost, pulled out all these peppers. They've been sitting as about a quarter bushel or so. Uh, they've been sitting in our spare fridge. We do have a lot of scotch bonnet or habanero variety. So uh, I expect these guys to be somewhere between very hot to screaming hot, which means uh, we need to be sensitive to how we use them. Uh, so uh, we are looking to do a couple of things. We've got, these are almost all hot peppers. Uh, we've got some poblanos. We've got some serranos, which are in the medium-ish to hot. And then we got all these hot peppers. Lacto-ferment hot sauce, basically very simple. Uh, I haven't really done a lot of it. I've done lots of pepper sauces. Lacto-ferment, I'm like, oh, the time, that's, it's nothing difficult on it. Um, you can do quick ones with vinegar, but a, a real fermented one starts with a five to 6% uh, by weight uh, of salt. So you basically weigh out a gallon of water and you put 5% uh, salt in it. So it's quite salty. So right, because that salt has to overtake the vegetable product and you float it in there anywhere from about a week to six months, depending on the curing and aging you want to do. And then you either use it as rings or, or you blend it up. When you blend it up, you add in some of that brine as needed to make it into a sauce consistency and it become, and then you cap it down and store it uh, fresh, refrigerated typically. You can can it. Uh, if you can it, um, you're going to lose some of the fresh properties, the vitamins, minerals, and the probiotics. Um, this is generally a very safe uh, method. Wash off your produce, work with clean equipment. Uh, this was rinsed out with hot water. It's been previously cleaned. Um, honestly, you don't have to be crazy, crazy sterile to still have a good effect on this. Uh, a little mold or something growing on the very top. If that shows up, you can scrape it off. If it doesn't come back, you're fine. Generally, it's a very safe and easy to do process. A um, couple different ways to do it. You can take the clean pepper and you can basically poke a hole, you know, cut a hole in it so that the, the brine penetrates it and throw those in. They'll brine a little slower. You can slice them in half or in big chunks. You can throw it in or you can chop it up. You can do seeds or no seeds. You can do skins or no skin or, you know, or um, stems. Um, notice, I'm just going to cut this here. Uh, for hot peppers or any peppers, a couple things to think about. Um, it's going to be blended up, but your heat comes from the ribs, the gills, um, the inside surface a little bit, and then the seeds. So if you remove the white pithy gill um, and cut that out and you remove most of the seeds, you're going to dramatically reduce heat level. So that's a good way to moderate things. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly split these open. I'm going to take the tops off one because I don't really need the green tops. Um, I've rinsed them, but I got, you know, you could get some sand in there. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. I'm going to cut those off. I'm going to scrape seeds with my finger. I'm not worried about every seed coming out. I'm going to pull some of the seeds um, and then I may give it a real quick chop on some bigger ones and they're going to get packed fairly tight in here. Because I have so many Scotch bonnet habanero style really hot peppers, Afraid we may overpower this a little bit. I'm gonna pack a few of these containers uh, with probably just scotch bonnets to make a really hot pepper sauce so we can decide when we use it. Uh, other things you can put in here. You can put some herbs in there, bay leaf or some thyme or things or, or cilantro, especially the wild cilantro. Uh, it can be a nice flavor uh, or you can put them in when you grind it up. Um, you could put in some dry spices, which are, tend to be pretty safe. If you like a little coriander or something like that. I wouldn't put in very much, just, just a touch. And the best thing is if you pull things out, you either have to pull them out before you grind it into a puree sauce. If it's not just going to be used as vinegar and pickled peppers. Uh, so things that can be ground without having sticks, uh, you know, or easily removed sachet. Get your bay leaf out before you grind it up there, that type of thing. Uh, would be a good idea. Uh, but keep it simple. Don't the flavor comes from the fermentation. Don't don't get crazy on it. Um, yeah, and and so we're gonna have something that's gonna hold for a year or two. Eventually it'll discolor. I mean it can go bad, but it takes a long time. Uh, I like to keep them under refrigeration if I've not cooked it. 
uh, but it's a great way to preserve peppers all through the winter. Uh, if you don't cook it, you preserve the vitamin C. So very high vitamin C, and you get some nice probiotics, so it's... Um, uh, I'm wearing gloves. I don't wear gloves a lot because they're not really necessary. I don't think you work much cleaner with or without gloves. Uh, I am wearing gloves because some of these guys are pretty darn hot. And um, anybody who's worked with peppers a lot, uh, even if you wash your hands thoroughly, the oil can get under your skin and get under your fingernails and can burn for days, like two or three days. So bad actually on some of these really hot peppers where you can get a physical burn where you get reddening and blistering and the skin peeling. Uh, irritated and it's, you know, we don't need to do that. It's not killing me, but it's hot. Mm -hmm. Really good thing to test the pepper. Start at the bottom, the bottom is the mildest, it can actually be quite mild, it can be misleading. But check the bottom if you think it's really hot. Take a little nibble. It, you can get a flavor for it and then and then move up and then get up towards the top of it uh, and then get and, and then if it's still not extremely hot and you're unsure kind of get into a whole bite of it or the seeds see what you end up with um, but that way you can <laughs> you can avoid uh, extreme extremely unpleasant if it's just too hot for you times point let's do this I gotta, 8 times 16 is 128 ounces times 0.05 6.4 ounces is 5% 6% is and we're, we've, we're packed in there pretty tight so I might go with the 6% you can go either way so was it 128 right 8 times 16 is 128 times 0.06 is 7.68 ounces so seven and a half ounces somewhere in there i like kosher salt um it's just a nice clean it's been filtered seven ounces um unidized salt which comes like this i'll say not iodized all over it um is good iodine tends to be better you could use iodized salt it's okay but you may get an off a little off flavor so it's preferred not to now you could start this ferment if you have other uncooked fermented items that you trust called backwashing. Like a starter and like what they yep. do for sourdough. You're getting your lacto. You're gonna get your lacto in there anyways, but if you want to get it going a little faster. And beat down any possible other stuff for yeast. The yeast is your biggest growth item that's going to skunk it. Um, so if you have another uncooked hot sauce that you trust, um, or you know a kimchi, problem is if that's contaminated, now you're increasing your contamination stuff. Um, but ideally, the lacto bacillus always outcompetes your Net, you know, your bad flavors and your pathogens so they become safe. That's why it's a very safe process. Maybe the health officials will tell you otherwise. Yes, yeah, things can go wrong, but overall, if you pay attention, it's a very safe process. Use your brain, use your nose, use your eyes. Throw a winning question. Sure this, this 
So you can put peppercorns or other things in here too. I'm not going to. Again, we're going to grind it all up. I want to have everything really nice, easy grind. This is fresh sauerkraut I just got last week from a source that I really trust. It smells funky good. It's got dill. It's dill sauerkraut. I'm smelling the dill. Not necessary to do this, but this is, this is called backwashing. There is plenty of good lacto ferment bacteria in that spoonful. We have cultured our water. This uh, should not be put in a cold, cold basement, especially in the winter or on concrete floors. Um, sort of like brewing, it's ideal to keep it at a coolish to room temperature. You'll get some bubbling, not that crazy ferment bubbling of of brewing and yeast, but you'll get there you'll get is. some gassing off. You'll get some CO2 and such. You're not, uh, but you're not gonna get that ra rapid purge and, and boil over that you get from a grain brew. It's gonna be pretty sour, funky. Um, sauerkraut can get pretty funky. A lot of times you put it off in a cool basement or somewhere, but not too cool, like I said. All right, so I guess three. Three quarter, three quarts. I'm gonna say we used about three quarts. Nice. Um, pretty close, and again, salt water is cheap, so I don't want to make it twice. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do. So I could poke a hole, but I got raw metal. This one. I'm just gonna leave the cap. Leave it loose. Just so it, because I got plenty of liquid in there. It's covering the top. It's just gonna purge out, and I'll actually get a headspace of primarily CO2 that develops in here. Um, and, and so it's it's not gonna um, it's gonna do its thing just fine with a cracked lid on it. So we're gonna check this. Uh, it could be ready in as short as a week. We might check it or even just pull one out and taste it. Um, and if we want to kind of cure and age it, we could go six months on it. You can actually grind it, and then you could even age it longer in the bottle, and it will mellow and do some cool things. But it's ready in a week uh, if you really want if you need it right away. Uh, so this is a great way for preservation. It is um, efficient and it allows you to eat your peppers in a near raw form uh, all through the year when you don't have peppers available. We are um, completing our lacto fermented pepper sauce. This was our cleanup uh, pre frost of all of our mostly hot peppers. That's what happened. Things fermented nicely. We got lots of bubbles. We got a little bit of purge and bubble over. Uh, this has a mason top. Um, you know, vent, one-way vent on it um, that we used. We don't have uh, one for this size from the gallon jar, so we just left the lid a little bit loose. Um, and so this one purged over a little more. It was a bigger container when it started fermenting a little. It just got a few bubbles, but we did get some spillover. Uh, starting about three or four days in, it uh, started to smell pretty nice. We got a, a real pleasant, peppery smell, and that's continued. Uh, we've darkened in color a little bit. So this one, I just have not opened it. Um, looks pretty good. Um, definitely do think the mason tops make it a little easier to work with it. And we have a, uh, we have one of the, what is this? What's the proper name for the glass pieces? The stone? I don't know. The, it's the pebble. Uh, this looks real nice, good clear liquid, has a nice smell of the pepper, it's very lightly of the garlic. Seems like I've got a couple little pieces of debris here. Um, that is um, probably a little bit of yeast or, or basic, you know, bacteria growth. It just grows at the very top, but it's almost nothing. Um, uh, in that we'll take off whatever we can of it. Uh, we should have enough acidity developed naturally from the lacto ferment and the salt that it'll be fairly well preserved. I would keep it refrigerated as a raw item uh, once it's pureed and watch it if it starts to get heavy mold growth. Um, either gonna need to cook it before it gets too bad or you're gonna have to throw it. Uh, we can also can it, hot pack canning it. It will change the flavor slightly and of course it will kill the live culture making it maybe less pro, a little less probiotic or a little less healthy. So we're gonna try and refrigerate it. Uh, so this one, uh, what we're simply gonna do is pour it in here. Um, I will 
blend it into a sauce and I'm going to leave back a little bit of the brine. I will add in more brine to thin the sauce as needed. The second one we did an old cleaned out uh, gallon glass gallon jar. Uh, we've got a whole blend of things in here. Same, same scenario, a little bit of garlic, everything else. We threw a pebble in here, it was a little small. Um, I took out a few pieces about a week ago. It was just starting to get a little bit of white mold growth up here. Um, so uh, what I did was I removed the pebble, I took the pieces I needed, discarded a couple pieces, added some straight white uh, apple cider vinegar, natural apple cider vinegar, just increase the acidity. Uh, tried to push it back down and then I capped it off, but I'm starting to get more mold growth so we didn't get back to this quickly. So about two days, three days ago, I threw it in the fridge just to retard activity. So at this point when you have it, this is a white mold. Uh, I'm not seeing hairy sporing things. You need to evaluate it and of course whenever you have a mold bloom um, you know, or an issue, you gotta, uh, you gotta have some concern about it. Most mold will not hurt you and some is very bad for you. Uh, so happy to take your comments on it. Uh, my opinion on this, and this is just my opinion, because I'll tell you that your state resource center is probably going to tell you just to throw it away, is that if I only see white mold, which is probably mostly yeast, um, or could could be some other general stuff, you know, fermentation, uh, like when you get sausages and stuff, um, I'm going to try and take off any of the pieces that have a lot on it and remove it. And I think I'm going to be just fine with it, um, and, and I'll, I'll maintain it. Um, however, when I puree it, I'm definitely going to refrigerate it, and if uh, because it, it will, it has a culture in there. It's going to blend it in there. So if I did this correctly, I will have created enough acidity from the fermentation, the pickling, and from the salt that it will retard future growth to a very slow rate or not at all when I blend it, um, and if I keep it packed below you know, the water level. Um, which is where the only place you get the mold is, is below uh, above the liquid area. Um, so if I get rid of that, I think I'm okay. If I see a quick return of the mold, uh, I'm, I'm going to think about it and I probably am going to throw it out at that point because I'm concerned that I haven't retarded uh, rampant mold growth uh, in something that I'm going to hold for a, little, for a period of time. So I'm just going to take off a few pieces here. Again, you would reduce this quite a bit. Uh, almost eliminated if I had a one-way air lock on it using a beer air lock top or using one of the um, mason jar tops. I'm going to wash my hands from using this one with slightly contaminated. I'm going to puree this one first because I know this one's in good shape. We'll come back and puree this one second because uh, I don't want to mess up this one. I'm going to dump this in here. Uh, that way I can limit the amount of liquid that gets used. Actually, if I like this liquid, this is one supposed to be hotter, but if I like this liquid, I might save some of this back and add it, add that into the other batch. Jamaican and Trinidad style pepper sauces. This isn't, shouldn't be too far off, it's similar types of peppers. Uh, they can be really hot. Now, as you pickle things, you bring the heat down a little bit. Got some heat on it. <laughs> really hot? Um, no, because I'm not, not dying. I would, I would put it in the very hot. Oh boy. Um, Probably more than I need. Yeah, I'd put it in the very hot, but not the out of control. It's truly a pepper sauce, not a salsa. Pepper sauce is for putting dots of it on. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas salsa, you can put spoonfuls on something. So yeah, I, this is definitely a dots. Yeah, it, it's got a good flavor. The salt's good. I'm going to put just a couple drops more liquid. Try and get it a little smoother because I can't totally puree it quite as much as I'd like probably and then we will put in some clean containers like one more clean quart and um, we'll hang on to it.
So we got a red and more reddish because there's more red peppers in that batch. Such is a nice consistency. It's a little chunkier. It's got some heat, but um, it's milder. It's nice and uh, vegetable. It's a little got a little bit of bitterness from just some of the peppers. It's got some earthy bitterness to it. Um, Salt level is perfect on it. As a condiment, it's salty. But. So I could also see, you can use this as a base with your fresh salsa. So in the summer, once you start getting your garden vegetables again, they don't always have full flavor in the spring. They're a little watery. Chop them up, mince them up, and then add a couple table, you know, a couple uh, teaspoons or even more and use this as your base to bring out deeper flavors with your fresh vegetables. Then add in your olive oils and fresh herbs and cilantro and, and bring your fresh salsa together with this base. The cost on that was um, a little bit of salt, uh, a little bit of thyme, and I guess a cup of vinegar, so a dollar of vinegar. And uh, yeah, in the growing season in our jars, which are pretty much on rotation plus new lids. Yep. So. Yep. All right, uh, it's Michael from Pack Time Permies, and we're wrapping up the end of our fresh uh, growing season with our lacto fermented salsa. Mm -hmm.